I mean, at, at the end of the day, that's, uh, th that's the number one curse of, uh, of, of data is uh, what do you do with it? I think we saw it uh, many years ago in, in the production uh, where every morning uh, there would be this spit out of reams of computer reports and uh, it would take you more than a day uh, to get through to understand what's in it, but more importantly, what do you do about it? Um, that is uh, the direction uh, with respect to uh, the ability to do the analytics, the analytics on that data. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons why we uh, have to have uh, the capture of that information but not take that data and, and just regurgitate it back to the operator or the plant people. It is about doing the analytics, uh, creating, uh, as you said in your, in your question, uh, it's actionable knowledge. And what we have to do is be able to drill down and whether that's via uh, expert systems or other algorithms uh, that are be able to apply it against it to be able to create the prioritization of what you do and, and how you should go about taking uh, that action. And certainly that is the direction uh, that all of our, uh, all of our software is, is headed, all of our uh, in, uh, manufacturing intelligence uh, portfolio uh, brings it to, to be able to create that decision-making prioritization and ultimately uh, give the uh, give the list of, uh, of, of what what should be done in what sequence and if necessary what what is involved in each one of those sequences uh, to create uh, that knowledge and to create uh, a complete picture uh, for the operator, for the plant manager, for the line supervisor uh, so they are not the ones that are having to wait through uh, that and, and that is the direction that uh, that our software uh, and our uh, portfolio of, uh, of of manufacturing intelligence uh, is going. Yeah, you know, I would say that that, that is one of the things we're working on as well. Is you can you can kill a customer with data, right? And just really trying to help them think through what's the problem they're trying to solve and what's the KPIs that they really need to monitor and presenting it in a way that makes their job easier and not makes them more frustrated and more confused and at the end of the day it totally exasperate and it's for us it's very iterative and we see extremes from one customer to the other and we see a difference from working with an, an operating team versus an IT team in terms of what they're trying to solve. We find the best way is to get those two teams together in the room together and then walk through a very uh, rigid process on what do you want the outcome to be. Like I said before, we get to practice a lot of uh, these skills in GE, and it's a very safe environment for us because we don't have to worry about offending a customer on, you know, on the right way to do things. And we have very heated arguments between our IT and our operations teams. And then sometimes you get in a room and we all agree, and then you get on two separate phone calls, and an IT team wants things one way, and the operations team wants things another way. And we have to be the ones to get people together and say, what is it that you really want to solve because we could spend a lifetime designing this solution for you and at the end of the day you're not you're probably not going to like it. So I think it takes a lot of communication, a lot of upfront planning and getting the cross-functional constituents together. Uh, you're never going to make both groups happy. You know, I come from the analysis community, right? I mean, I'm the one that does analytics. I'm the one that does the analysis. Drown me in data just frigging drown me. You can't give me enough data. My computers are big enough, I'll handle it. Now, I won't give you the answer this afternoon, right? So that's the operational team. So what we're increasingly finding is the requirements of the daily team, the people who are operationally there, worrying about do I start this up, shut that down, fix this this morning, you know, delay it till the evening shift, whatever. People dealing with that have a different requirement for the data. Either the analytics have to be so robust and so automated as to occur in a second, um, and that's typically not the case except for very straightforward things. But on the flip side of that, um, if I'm evaluating making a process change on a system, that's not been running well. Hi, we've started this thing up and it's running in the 70s and it's not, we're not happy with that and we want to fix it. It's not because, that's likely not because somebody on a daily basis is operationally screwing up. It's probably because there's a problem with the design. I want everything. 
on that process. And the problem is the data model for what I need and the kind of questions that I'm going to answer are totally different. For example, I, MTBF and MTTR, not enough. You might need that every day, right? All that tells you is kind of like whatever. I'm normally asked the question, is this belt wearing out? Is it failing accidentally? Or are we having trouble on the install and it's failing prematurely? And I have to answer that question with statistics, which means I need to do Weibull fits, find the beta, so on. To do that, I have to have a data acquisition system that allows me to get that information. So there, I think there's a trap that people think that all the data, supervisory data that comes out of a plan is about the operational community. I would say they're the first community, but there is a second community. And if you don't have the second community, if there is no one answering the question is, is this wearing out? If I replace it, what impact will that have on the rest of the line, right? So this, this creates 10 minutes of downtime. If I replace this, am I gonna get a 10 minute downtime benefit, a two minute downtime benefit, or a 40 minute downtime benefit? That question is not something you're gonna answer without somebody doing likely a simulation and so on, especially if there's surge and complexity. So who have you got looking at the data? I, I would say this is a, uh, that I, I would argue there is a missing analytic function in an awful lot of entities. This is a profession. This is a job. This is something that people do for a living. Uh, they live and die by living with large quantities of data, analyzing things more complexly than let's make some uh, histograms from this morning's run. Not to say that isn't important, because that's the immediate thing. I can't get back to the plant by, by 1 o'clock and say, fix this yet. Um, but I can tell the design meeting on Friday that if you want to fix this, we're going to have to make the following adjustments to procedure or technology. For us, it gets back to what I was talking about before as far as human-centric design. And uh, I was a president of Rosemount. We make pressure transmitters. I can tell you that we can give you tons of data on pressure transmitters that maybe you don't even need. Um, so I think that the issue is, is that if you look at it from the end user's point of view, what data does that individual need to do their job? Rather than what information can I provide, what information does that individual need? So in these dashboards, what we like to do is be able to say, what information do you need? Do you look at every day, and you know if this is good or if it's bad? Is there a problem or is there not a problem? Then, if is there an emergency that needs to be alarmed, and what is that? Don't send that to the maintenance person if someone in the control needs to have that. So we need to understand what data is required by that individual. Is it something they want to be able to view on an hourly basis, or is it something they would need to know because there's an emergency? Or is it something that they want to look at once a month? So I think we need to look at from the, from the, the operator's perspective, from the end user's perspective, and then provide them with that data. And uh, that's what we're trying to work on is these dashboards so it helps them do their job and to be able to sort through all the pieces of data.